What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where we get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate business into a life of freedom. Uh, we are taking your questions today, and we're talking a little bit about negotiation. Uh, there was a great question uh, about the whole certified negotiation expert designation, uh, which got me and Greg talking behind the scenes. And so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how you present negotiation and your negotiation skills in your upfront consultations with potential buyers and sellers so that they understand uh, some of the um, some of the things that are in store for them in the process so that they understand the value that we bring as agents. Uh, so we've got a lot of stuff to get into today. As always, we have a bunch of questions off the Facebook group that we're going to cover, and then we'll also take your questions live. So be sure to put them right here in the Facebook comments if you're joining us live. First of all, mm -hmm. fresh back off of our in-person meeting at uh, seeing the Sunset Winos and our friend Stefan and Dika play over the weekend uh, up in Paso Robles, Greg Nitanio, my co-partner in crime, all real estate related, of course. What's yes. Up? No real crime is committed here except for breaking hearts and making money. That's what that's a crime, then I'm guilty as charged, sir. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> and so it, are you specifically breaking hearts by taking their money? Like, what's how does the breaking uh, hearts that could that could be it? That could be it, but you guys, this is the uh, your wallet. The, this is the event we went to the Sunset Winos at Rava Wines in Paso Robles. What an awesome time! Super, super fun. Actually, got mm -hmm. two leads for um. EXP down there, just by wearing my shirt, said mildly offensive. He goes, what the fuck? Yeah, why aren't you totally offensive? And I'm like, um, because this is my down day, my off day. I'm just mildly offensive. Uh, <laughs> but interesting conversation. Uh, so much fun. So kudos to Stefan and Dika and all the hard work that everyone put into it. But, um, you know, I am exhausted, Matt. I am truly exhausted. I, uh, I, I just want to unplug. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I think it was a two or, two or three hour drive for you. It was about a five hour drive for me. Uh, so we both met. It was kind of in the middle. Uh, so it's one of the only times. It may, maybe, maybe the only time uh, we've ever gone somewhere, like traveled somewhere, that we weren't speaking. Uh, yeah. So it's basically just like we we met up. And we're like, what's up? What's up? All right, let's go to the event. And, uh, <laughs> and then hung out and then went out the next day. So that that is the sum total of Greg and I's uh, Greg and I's hanging out over the weekend. But it was a great time. Yeah. And uh, and it was part of Stefan's strategy. This is the interesting part from a sales and marketing perspective. Is uh, it is kind of the ultimate, I guess, expression or the ultimate pinnacle of running an event uh, to generate recruiting, you know, real estate leads. Because in this case, Stefan not only put on the event, he was the figurehead, he was the center of attention. He gets to be on stage, he gets to announce whatever he wants in the meantime. So he was able to announce, like during the breaks, like, "Hey, we're doing this because you know, I these are all my friends from my previous life in music." I moved here for love. I love Paso. I love the area. I love the community. I love helping homeowners, you know, buy and sell homes. You know, here's my wife, Amber, over there. If you if you guys are thinking about buying and selling, make sure to talk to her. You know, she's got some information for you. Like he did a phenomenal job, not just of putting on the event, and he put on a great event in a great venue, but he did a good job of leveraging the attention and the fact that it was him putting on the event to steer it towards real estate. And since he stuck up on stage, he did a great job of directing that attention at his wife so that there was someone tangible that they could talk to while he was, you know, continuing to be the center of attention on stage. So I can't think really of a better way to run an event than that than to bring homeowners together, just show them a great time, show them your your personality, that you're a real human being with hobbies and interests outside of just being a real estate agent and still get the chance to like tell them what you do, what you're good at. And by the way, here's someone you can talk to right this second if you have questions or you want some information. And uh, yeah. and they get all the information of the people that registered to come to the event so that they can continue to follow up and keep in touch with them. So very well done to you, Stefan, and a good example of how anybody can put on a great local event uh, to kind of boost their profile and start generating recruiting or uh, real estate leads. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, if you, and if you guys aren't an old, uh, or an ex rock and roll star and have all those famous, famous buddies to show up at an event, something else that you can go do is go get, uh, you know, real rock star connect, uh, work with them. They'll help make you the celebrity in your neighborhoods. Um, and that's another one. It's only 350 bucks a month, guys. It's a freaking steal of a deal. They do an excellent job and they will create all the buzz around you with a little bit of your own help. Uh, but I think that that's one of the things, Matt, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about negotiations, but I also want to talk about how to create, how to make you the celebrity in your neighborhood. Like how can you okay. create your own buzz? Cause I have a couple mm -hmm. of ideas that we can go over here. Uh, but let's dive into the negotiations. Let's, let's, let's take a take one of our first questions as we always do. And then we'll go into the questions. So guys, please start writing your questions down on the, in the, in the notes here so that we can tackle those for you as well. Uh, but Matt, what is our first question for this show? 
All right. So the question on uh, on the negotiation stuff that caught my eye was this one. Um, here we go. Uh, this is from Steve Patino in the Lead Gen Scription Objections Group. Does anyone in the group have any experience or feedback with the Certified Negotiation Expert uh, course and designation for real estate agents? The school has three components to it. Each is two days long, and it'll be in my area wow. soon. Do you have any advice? So yeah, so it's a lot. It's an intensive uh, intensive certification or designation, whatever you want to call it, uh, to get. And the the one team that comes to mind that I know uses it and leverages it well is Brett Jennings' team, which is the number one, formerly number one KW uh, team in NorCal. They've sw since switched over to EXP, um, but at the time they were the number one uh, KW team in NorCal, so it gives you an idea of what their sales are. Brett Jennings, by the way, is also the one that does the phenomenal job of his off-market property list, which at this point I think is over 300. Um, I was looking at that on his blog the other day. So we, we've talked about that on previous episodes. Um, but they, they do a good job of, of really putting that out there and, and making sure that it's built into their value proposition for listing properties, which is that we are a certified negotiation expert. Every member of our team is a certified negotiation expert. Uh, I don't think that the general public values it enough to make it, uh, you know, to, to like hang your entire unique value proposition off of negotiation because we've done, as an industry, we've done a really poor job of really opening the kimono and showing people what the negotiation entails and just how much money and time and frustration is on the line based on our negotiating skills. So I don't think it's something that we put out to the public primarily as our number one thing, number one reason why you call us. But I do think it's something that when we show up to the listing appointment, the, the buyer consult, it is something that we need to go through. Because well, I mean, what would you say? I think the statistic is there is something like one to three percent of the purchase price is in play in the negotiation yeah. during the phase from like accepting, and we're not talking about like what what does the purchase offer say? We're talking about once the purchase offer is accepted, even there, there's one to 3% of the purchase price in play in the negotiation phase that can go to the buyer or the seller or flip one way or the other, depending on the outcome of the contract to close. And most, most, you know, most homeowners or home sellers, home buyers have no idea that that's true. No, they don't because they don't really think about it like that. And that where you're talking about that one to three percent, that goes right goes right into the request for repairs part of the whole contract, and any concessions the seller might give, um, you know, to the buyer for for maybe credits for closing costs or repairs to the property, or it could even be to the, the fact that um, you know the the appraisal came in lower than the purchase and you know the seller has to give up some money or the buyer has to put in money to make that that difference so yep. there's so many different moving parts when it comes to that one to three percent and if we think about it take a listing of yours take then figure out what what the one percent is and what the three percent is and then think about it you're like ah oh, shit like that really is like not a bad thing to, to really look at when it comes to what you're going to give. If you have bad electrical or if you have bad you know, water under the house or whatever the scenario is. But it's quite interesting to think about it. You're yeah, vigorously I'm just running the numbers on your, like, 1.3 million is your average. Yeah. So, so anywhere from thirteen to $39,000 is at stake. Thirteen. That's a little high. Well, not unless you get a lot of stuff done. I mean... And a lot of the times the bank won't let you credit all that much money, so it'll have to be repairs, or it could even be a reduction in the purchase price, like we talked about, if the appraisal comes in funny. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a lot. That's a comma with two well, numbers think before about, the comma think about the entire the, uh, time. Think about the carrying costs, right? So, I mean, if yeah. you set a closing date and you negotiate for a closing date so that they don't have to make another house payment, and then something happens and you you don't have the negotiating power to say, no, we close on time or not at all, and that closing date gets extended a week or two, bam, there's another house payment they have to make, another another round of um, five, you know, that carrying Five costs. to $7,000, yeah. Exactly. That's a, so it's a lot of money. Yeah, plus, yeah plus so I mean, the, at the very uh, least, we're talking about 1%. We can at least say pretty mm -hmm. firmly 1% one, one to 2% of the purchase price is at stake during the negotiation phase, uh, and that's one of the things where we, we have to really – we have to let, especially man, especially buyers. Holy cow! Um, First-time home buyers that have no idea what the process is like. Yeah. Do, I mean, we, we need to really do ourselves a favor and do a better job of explaining to them like what the process is going to be like. We we kind of sow the seeds of our own misery um, in dealing with buyers because they don't really know what to expect, and we probably do a poor job of setting their expectations in the beginning because we're just so happy to have a client. We want to get out there and help them look at homes that we skip all the the expectations that need to be set so that they understand 
what the value is and what separates me from somebody else. So to get back to the question of whether you should get a certified negotiation designation, obviously yeah, you do it for the skill that you will build, which will make you a better agent, and that's true. But yes, beyond that, make sure that you leverage it in your marketing, not as the main thing, but as a credibility indicator, right? Alongside, a, to me, I look at it as a testimonial, right? Um, in fact, te you know, five or six testimonials, if you can get them, would probably be just as powerful as, as the designation. So you could probably save yourself some time. If you get testimonials from five or six homeowners saying like, hey, so-and-so negotiated blah, blah down on my, on my sale price or, or on my buy price, or they save me, you know, five thousand dollars on repairs by negotiating with the the buyer's agent to get them to pay for the things that they wanted done. So if you could get five or six testimonials to that effect, that would probably give people the same effect uh, without you having to go spend two days in a designation, uh, because that to me they're kind of on par, right? It, they're that that designation is just a credibility indicator. Yeah, you can also go to the Black Swan uh, group. And you know the Black Swan Group guys, we've had them on our show, on our show before, and they are Chris Foss, le Chris Foss legit, you know, ex FBI international lead hostage negotiator. Yep. That's a, he has to have a very big business card for that very big title, and uh, but he gives they give a free negotiating newsletter out every week with tips and tricks on how to negotiate. So if you wanted to kind of have a drip system, you know, kind of a, a way of learning, a little tactic you can put into play every week. Go to the blackswangroup.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you can then get a, a little drip. I, I read them, and they're fantastic. I mean, they're they're so practical that it's funny. If you want to read his book, what what was his book? Um, Never split the difference. Yep. Is that yeah? Never split the difference. Great, great, great book. Um, and you guys will learn how to do some negotiations there. And if you guys ever give us uh, put thumbs up in the comments, guys, if you guys are have any training in negotiations, um, I have like a I guess I get I guess I could say I have a very third party training in negotiations because my dad would always negotiate me into a corner when I was when I was young and, and when I was doing something stupid. That's right, you got he, on the receiving end of the oh of the God. magic. He yeah, painted me into it. corners, and then he paint, make myself paint me in the corner, and then. I, I send it. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. And blah 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 blah. He's like, so what are you gonna do now? I'm like, oh, fuck, damn it, I'll do it now. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, there's a, there's another question that caught my eye. This is from Matt Sutherland. It says, what handouts are agents specifically preparing for FISBO and expired appointments? Um, I've got some ideas on this, uh, Greg. What's um, I know you don't work a lot of expires. What about FISBOs? What would you bring to them? What would you bring to a FISBO that would be of value to them? You know what we need to do? We need to get Veronica Jones on our show and talk about what she's doing with FISBOs and expireds. She is Dale Archdeacon. Actually, was she showed him what he's doing. He Dale is a great coach, great dude, very knowledgeable. He looked at her and goes, don't change anything that you're doing right now. And for him to say that, that's really saying something. Because she shows up, she has this whole, you know, production that she puts on of uh, just how she approaches them, what she gives them, how she words everything. And she's she, two weeks ago, she, in one week, she walked away with three listings, like $876,000 in, in val volume in one mm -hmm. week just by stopping by. So I think that the one thing you'd want to do for expires or FISBOs, go to the house, physically show up to the house, bring maybe an RPR report uh, that you've done, maybe bring a cost, you know, price versus cost report, which you can download and kind of print out. And that's like, if they were to do repairs, what the cost versus the price would look like. So if you're going to put a new front door on, how much is that cost going to be and what kind of money you're going to be able to get it recoup out of that investment? Bring value to them like that. And then see if you can set up a time to come back and really run numbers, but give them something up front that show them that you're doing doing legwork. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe run a Facebook ad scenario. Don't actually run the ad, but run the demographics on the back end to know how many people live within a 50 mile radius of this property that based upon your knowledge of the neighborhoods would be the most likely buyers. So you can just have a conversation, you know, hey, Matt, Julie, you're three obese wood denting yeah. insulin suck control babies, you know. With my knowledge of the area, I know that there's probably 6,211 people that are most likely to buy this home. I've already preset an ad up that with these demographics of the 50 mile radius. I can press go at any time and run for you out of, as a courtesy uh, to develop some buyer leads. But here's a price report on your home. And here's if you were to do some fix ups, here's a, you know the cost and this is the percentage of return you're going to get when you when you sell the home. So it might not be best. Do, do all of these things, you might want to do this one, this one, and that one, and then leave it alone. 
Mm-hmm. You come with a giving spirit, not a, hey, Matt, you done fucked up. Give me your listing. Or you pick Bob from Remax, that jackalope. You know, you need to pick, you know, drop the, what, what, what was that? Um, oh, fuck, it was a funny saying. Drop the zero and get with the hero. I think that's a good one. Drop the zero and get with the hero. <laughs> <laughs> Bold move, Cotton. Bold move. All right. <laughs> Before I uh, give my give my response on the expired one, because I, I 100% agree, that's exactly what I would do for Fizbos as well. My my only addition, potential addition to that, uh, would be you may want to go uh, classic kind of. Um, what would I say, Craig Proctor, Dean Jackson kind of strategy. And also, uh, if you're a good writer, work something up like the, you know, the top seven things to keep in mind when selling your home. The, the, the top seven most surprising strategies that gets homes sold in 2018, right? Mm-hmm. And just put like a single page thing of like Facebook ads, um, you know, hire a professional photographer to do both daylight and and twilight photography. Like like just like just some of the things that are surprising, like the things that would really get them thinking, like, oh my God, I never thought about doing that to market my home. It doesn't tell right. them you need an agent to do it. It just tells them it just gives them an inside peek at what your marketing plan actually is without saying, Hey, here's my marketing plan. The only way to do this is to work with me. But that's kind of the message is, hey, look, you, I know you're not going to do all this stuff yourself. Here's all the things that I would, that I do for my listings that work, that are surprising. And you can do them too. Or later on, you can work together again to get them done. So uh, that was the only thing, other thing that I would potentially add into uh, like a FISBO. But I yeah. wanted to briefly, um, I uh, just wanted to say a quick shout out to Mario, who I met this weekend. Wyatt brought him up from Palm Springs to hang out so with Mario. us this weekend. What's going on, Mario? Wyatt, it was great to hang out with you in person. Got to yeah. hang out and meet Arne for the first time, which was awesome. She's quite a character. Uh, <laughs> and we've got a whole bunch of people uh, watching with us as well. Carol, Dana, Tom, Brittany, Paul, of course, Paul Franklin. What's up, man? Bob, um, great. hopefully you're not with Remax. Uh, Justin, because <laughs> we, we inadvertently make fun of you all the time. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Smith, Alicia's here. So, uh, Mark and Teresa, thank you so much, guys, for watching with us live. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. More importantly, put your location in the comments so that you can connect with other like-minded, freedom-loving agents that watch the show and listen to the show. Uh, and we can all keep you in mind for referrals, depending on what area that you're in. Um, expires. All right. So, what would you print out and take to expires? Here's my answer for that based on knowing um, – one of my mentors, Frank from Viral Marketing, who tinkered around with direct mail to expires for like six months, mm-hmm. uh, he could not find any direct mail piece. No, nothing that he put on the printed paper worked any better than printing off their listing sheet off the MLS and circling some things and saying, I know why your home didn't sell. Call me. <laughs> nothing. Like they couldn't outperform that that thing. Um and you know so, what you could you know what we could do you could combine two things you okay. could get a regular envelope print out their their MLS sheet in color because people okay. they're they'll, they'll attract attracted to color more right take a black magic marker don't take a nice pretty pen take a black magic marker make it messy circle different things they're like yep I don't know if it's random or just like the word the just circle the word the ah I know why your house didn't sell or it's right there it's the word the never use the word the in a in a listing description like, huh. But then you take you go straight up blue fishing Steve Sims style black black marker write their name and address on the front, kind of like messily but big and in their face so people are like what the hell when they get this thing it's not printed it's not pretty, and you put it in there with your business card attached to it. I, you could do the Steve Sims to it. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm yeah, actually like thoroughly excited well, about yeah, trying that. Basically, what um, yeah, that's what the whole like a listing sheet kind of strategy is. It, it's a, it's a very it's ugly marketing. It's very Steve. Uh, same style. Yeah, I love it. Um, and uh, J- Justin asked, what, who, who are we making fun of? What did I do? I just wanted to clarify, we're making fun of Bob from Remax. Uh, he yes. seems to be the punching bag for any joke. Where we have to like mention other agents, it's just it's always <laughs> Bob. We had to pick somebody to pick on. Where we don't have anything against Remax. We don't know any Bob from Remax, but it, that Greg being Greg decided it was Bob from Remax. Just like he decided I'm magically married with three obese children. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I told you this, Greg. So I was sitting around with Greg Harrelson at, um, at the team building summit in between us speaking or something like that. It was in between sessions here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and one of the, one of the fans of the show came up cause he had, he had booked a ticket to come hang out. He watches both podcasts and he's like, Oh man, so awesome to meet you. I half expected to see your obese kids wandering around here. I'm like, <laughs> they are fake. They are a figment of Greg's imagination. 
<laughs> oh, just like our new superhero names, Catman and Bird Boy. Yeah, something you like know. that. That's right. Yeah. Catman and Bird Boy in the mornings. It's the best, <laughs> it's the best morning show you're not listening to. Uh, traffic, 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 news, weather, and traffic with Catman and Bird Boy in the morning. All right. Uh, let's let's take another question. This is from Lacey Houston. She says, uh, if someone came to you inquiring more info on an auction property, would you invest the time? Why or why not? Uh, do you run a, a, much into that yet up in your area with the auction no. properties? Okay. No, not really. It's very good. Get, we've, we've had Dave, guys, if you have questions about that, Dave Fresquez uh, from here in San Diego has been on the show. Uh, he's doing a lot more with auctions because he's seeing the market shift a little bit that way, especially in, I would say, upper end to luxury. Um and so that it's an interesting market. I'm just, we're just kind of keeping our eyes on it. One of my clients, Mike Lafito, who's also been on the show, uh, has a uh, has a kind of an endorsement slash strategic partnership with uh, an auction company, so that he can offer it as an option to his luxury listing clients, the ones that want to put their homes up for sale. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, especially in places that aren't, let's say, Beverly Hills, um, you know, La Jolla, where luxury properties just turn over the same as any other property. Um, once you get into like Midwest markets and your luxury, you're, you're like two or three times the average price. Those properties don't turn, turn over quickly. They can be on the market for one or two years. So sometimes wow. auctions, yeah, oh yeah. Like, I mean, Mike's, Seriously? There, there's, there's, yeah, there's listings in Mike's area in Chicago um, where somebody's trying to sell a home that, um, what was it? It was Michael Jordan's home. I think Michael Jordan's old home has been on the Chicago market for a couple of years. Um, really? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so and it's not unusual because there's only, I mean, there's only a handful of homes in the in the entire state of Illinois that sell for like over two million dollars in a given year, right? I mean, Greg, that's that's a basically that's a little bit of a high end listing for you, but it's not that big of a deal when one sells. It's a no. big deal when a three million dollar property sells in Illinois, and I think I a lot of our listeners are in markets like that, and so yeah. that's uh, so an auction can be a, a valuable and a like a viable option. Uh, so it helps to have that ammunition if somebody asks you about that in the listing presentation. Yeah, you know, I, it just, that's just market knowledge, though. I mean, you know that you're going to get into these higher priced properties. You know it's going to sit for a while. Then that's just being a good that's just being a good real estate agent, right? Mm -hmm. And well, I, and and honestly, being a good real estate agent is having love, other options uh, available. I love having low, high high end listings. So no disrespect to our high end listings, because those are nice. They're shiny little jewels in your crown. But I, give, right. give, give, give me a seven hundred thousand to a one point two million, one point five million dollar home, all day, every day, and that th shit will sell like this. You know what to do when you work. Like a lot of the areas around the country, that's their two hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, your hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, the bread and butter that just makes everything move, right? Yep. And so don't, when we're talking about these huge luxury listings and everything like that, don't say, well, shit, I got to get out there and I got to get me a luxury listing. No, you don't. You need to get the average in your neighborhood so it fucking sells. That's what you need to go get. So don't, don't, oh, Grace, the average is 1.3. Yeah, that's just my marketplace. Yes, that is a four bed, three bath, three car garage ranch. You know, two car garage. like if, yeah, two car garage. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's literally like the, like I've seen the homes and uh, like in your area when I was hanging out with you last, uh, in the fall of last yeah. year. And I mean, they're nice. Part of the reason that they're nice is because they're so expensive that the people that live there have the disposable income to make them nicer. They're, I mean, the, the area that you live in, Greg, is very similar to an area that we were talking about when we were hanging out with Paul and Chad from Omaha. We we're hanging, we we're mm -hmm. sitting in downtown Omaha and he was talking about some of the area. It was an area of Omaha called Regency, which is the older area where a lot of the doctors live, uh, the work at the hospitals that are close by that area. And so it's a very prestigious, but also old. Right. Yeah. So the so you've got like ranches and, and mid centuries and stuff like that from the 60s and 70s. Some of them haven't been updated in 40 years, but they'll go for two or three times the average sale price in Omaha. Same thing is in your area. They're not they're not that great. They're they're not like luxury homes. It's a luxury price point because of the demand to live in that area. Right. Yeah. So that's a, that's very oh, different. And, that, and that's the kind of the ideal. Like, hey, I mean, why not? If you can get into those areas where they're going to turn over. um but they're also two or three times your average list price of anywhere else. Like better to list that than list the $50 million property that never sells and you never collect a commission off of it, but you have to put all the time and effort in. There was a, uh, a property that actually was $50 million here in Danville. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a hundred acres all with vines on it for grapes and nice house. They originally had it for 50 mil and you go in and this guy has a, had a car barn. Car barn. You have so many freaking cars. 
I'm not okay. kidding. Like, like every every flavor of vehicle was in there. Walked into his like man cave, mahogany, everything. You know, his pictures of his jets, Zzz, like <laughs> a jet plural, plural. <laughs> jets, plural. Okay. Um, and then you walked upstairs to his office, and then into this house, and it wasn't all that nice. Hmm. And that thing sat and sat and sat. Totally screwed up our our medium you know listing price, which is kind mm-hmm. of a jackass thing to do. They pulled it off the market. They put like a million or two million dollars into the home, renovated it, brought it back on for twenty five million. Things Whoa. still sitting there. Whoa, my still sitting <laughs> yeah. there. Wow, still sitting. Now that's yeah. Just remember that the next time you go try to take a, a seller to ke- take like a ten thousand dollar price reduction. <laughs> <laughs> he took a twenty-five million dollar price reduction, but it, it was just I wasn't going to sell at fifty million. You know, yeah, he's exactly. a billionaire out of Silicon. Uh, they made his money in wiring and cables mm-hmm. and shit. So I mean, he's got yeah. he doesn't need the sale of the money. He just they weren't living in that that house, so they decided to sell that house. <laughs> when when we get to the point where Matt, you and I have twenty-five million dollar homes that we just don't spend a lot of time in yeah, because the Riviera other... has been calling us. You know, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I find myself spending more time on my yacht than I do in the uh, in the house. I mean, that's just the bottom line. All right, let's uh, let's take another question. This is from Mike Morgan. It says, "If I can't, the the objection is this: if I can't get X from the market at this time, I'll just rent it out. This would be a seller. If I can't get X, if I can't get my number, I'll just rent it out. How do you combat that?" You ask him, okay, so what? why are we trying to sell it anyways? Is it just because you're interested in or, or, or are you committed to selling this thing? I can help you rent it right now. You know, if you if you want if we, if you want to stop the pain, we can, why don't we just pull it off the market right now? Why don't we just rent it right now for you? Because it, it, he's throwing it out there to see what's going to happen. You just throw it back at him and be like, okay, let's do it, man. Let's do this. You know, let's pull it off the market right now. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I said, if I'm not going to get my number. Oh, I know, but why don't we just, why don't, why, why don't we just rent it? Why don't we just just rent it? We'll get a good tenant in there for a long time for you, and we'll just, you know, we'll just do that. How about we do that? No, no. I said I wanted if I don't get my number. I know, I know, I know. But why, why don't we just do that? What's, it's a, you know, it's, I know it's been a struggle for you guys. Why don't we just rent this thing out? And you just throw because I mean, why waste your time if he's unwilling to come off that number and the number's not realistic? Might as well do a favor for him, be in his corner, stay up with him, get a renter in there, and then when that thing, when that you keep an idea on the value, when you get to that number, that value he's looking for, you know, you can bring it back over to him and say, hey, look, Mr. Seller, your value is where you wanted it to be the last time we spoke. Let's put it back on the market. Now they, this is where you can run into a problem because that seller, he's just like everybody else. He's watching the numbers climb, right? So he also he wanted nine hundred thousand for the house, and he had, and it was uh, realistically uh, an eight hundred thousand dollar home. It climbs a hundred grand, or the market drops down, so there's less inventory, so there's more demand. The buyers will pay more. So let's say he can get that nine hundred. Well, now he's probably going to say, hey, you know what? I think I, I think I want a million dollars for it now. You're like, Gosh, damn it, dude. <laughs> He, he's not real about selling it. He, there's not enough pain there for him to actually do something, but he will suck the lifeblood out of you when it comes to your time and energy on trying to sell something that's not realistic. And so if, you, if he has to get his number, well, his number is like mental masturbation. It yeah. feels really good, but it, it's not going to get you to the end result at yeah. all. Yeah. So you got to protect your time. And sometimes that's letting letting this client go so you can go work with someone who actually is a real client that really understands what's going on and will spend the time with you that you just, you know, t- the time and energy with you and so you can get a payday. That is what you bring. You bring time and knowledge. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. don't waste 50% of your assets with a jackalope that won't re- that won't, that's not respecting you. Mm-hmm. End of story. <laughs> jackalope. Jackalope. <laughs> They're rampant here in Northern California, Matt. Oh, I right. see I see them mounted in all kinds of bars. <laughs> all right. Oh, crazy Northern Californians. All right. Uh, here's a good question from Kelvin Kohler. What's your best intro when you call an expired through a dialer and the name that shows up is possible owners? So in other words, you don't, you're calling an expired and you don't know what the owner's name is. Uh, Kevin yeah. says, every time I try to just say, hey, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? They just hang up. Um, Greg, I know you. I know you don't call it expired, so I'm going to step in and answer this from the perspective of Aaron Wittenstein, who does this all day, every day, because I know what Aaron's system is. So Aaron never asks for the owner's name, right? He only asks for, "Hey, is this the owner of One Two Three Spring Street?" Like he literally just like that's that's his standard thing. Um, and so I know that it works, right? 
it actually probably works better than asking for their name. Greg, what do you do on circle prospecting calls? It's been a while since I watched your live cold call prospecting. I know, perish the thought. Mad. I thought there was a, there was something coming between our, our friendship and it's you not watching me do calls. That's right. <laughs> but what's your what's your standard MO when you're calling on circle prospecting? Do you worry about trying to get their name right? Dude, what do we what do we know about me? Well, you're, uh, let's see. Um, and there's... Starts with a D. That's, that is a very large doorway you just opened. I know you're <laughs> dyslexic, but I was going to throw like 17 other things out there oh, before no. I got to dyslexic. <laughs> I knew I'm like, ah, just, well, just let you it really, happen. You really did open a very large barn door that I uh, decided not to sail through. I'll be nice. Greg is a very nice person. Yeah, He's he very amazing. highly motivated. He wears very interesting T-shirts, and he also happens to be dyslexic. <laughs> So you like my style. Cool. Um, so I'm dyslexic. So, and you know, there's what they call dirt in the data. So dirt in the data sets is basically incorrect information. And knowing that to be true, what I decide to do is I decide to say, oh, hi, uh, this is, uh, my name is Greg McDaniel. I go right into who I am. I go right into what I'm, what I'm calling for. Um, and it, it, it never really, I mean, of course, there's some jerk offs in there that are rude, but 99% of the people are actually really receptive and have a conversation with them. And then I'll just throw something out there. I'll be like, is this, wait, I might, are you, what's your first name again? I think I don't, I don't have, I don't think I have that right data here. What's your first name? Mm. Oh, my name's uh, Rebecca. Okay. Yep. 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 They didn't put the right name in. And you see, then you immediately go up to your file, like, Rebecca. And you put that information well, in there. It's a good thing I didn't call you Sanjay, but okay, yeah. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> oh, so like, they're wow. so, so close. I mean, you yeah, just don't exactly. ever know the difference. Yeah, uh, so, so and there, there's a great comment here that somebody replied um, already and, and brought up something that I thought is probably closer to what's really going on, which is that if we, if we know this works for somebody else, just like either not asking for the owner or, you know, by name or just asking like, hey, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Like it works for other people. So if you're getting exclusively hung up on when you try to do that, then it has to be a tone, pacing, hesitation when you first jump on the line, like something like that. Something else is going on other than just the fact that you're not able to use the owner's name, right? Mm -hmm. And and yeah, because I, I like there, there's plenty of people that don't use the owner's name when they're circle prospecting or calling expires or whatever the case is, and it works just fine for them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's great if you can say, hey, is this John? But I mean, how often do you have the exact right data? I mean, imagine if you're calling John Smith and you have John's name and that's accurate, but a woman picks up the phone. You don't go, yeah. hey, is this John? Like, Hi, it is could John just, there? Yeah. Can John come yeah. out and play? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, at some point, you're always going to run into that no matter what your data is. You're never going to have perfect data, and it doesn't matter. No, no, it does not matter, and, and you shouldn't let it hold you up either. Just go out there. If you want to go research it, and if you want to be a high S and a high C, go ahead and go to the, you know the data. The, go look up the address in the county records. See what see what names pop up on the county records. If you really want to be that anal, that would drive me banana kicks. If I had to do that, oh my god, I'm just tired mentally thinking about doing that. Johnson couldn't do it. <laughs> I would rather get your name wrong than go spend time you know researching it because I would right. beg for forgiveness. Versus ask for permission. That's yes. Well, that's thing. because you can pull that off on the phone, and you and, and in the end, they just end up loving you for it. That's that's how that works. Loving um, me. So let's. Uh, there's a good question here on uh, <laughs> seller lead follow up. Okay. Okay. So this is an internet seller lead. Uh, this is uh, Kirk has the question. Uh, so he gets an email back uh, from the automated system. So it kicks out the estimate, and they reply to the estimate. And goes, hey Kirk, your estimate's in the ballpark. We're planning on selling in one to two years. So how would you take action on that? So you've got an, you've got the seller lead. They reply. They tell you your estimates in the ballpark, but they're not planning on selling right now. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily going for a listing appointment or a listing consultation, but you do want to get some FaceTime. You want to, you want to <laughs> at least get them on the phone. Something, right? Ann Hall's watching us right now. She's like, "Hey, hi, C here." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that is not that is not an insult. <laughs> You just know that you need more background information and knowledge. I love the hey, like you <laughs> dick. <laughs> hey. All right, what was the question? I got I got totally distracted by did. by Ann. Uh, the you get an email oh. back from an internet seller lead. Your estimates in the ballpark, but they're not planning to sell right away. Okay, what I would probably do, I would uh, I would put together like an RPR report 
Um, I would also, you know, and I would bind it, print it out. I would do a Steve Sims thing. I would have a, you know, a letter that's been pretty standard, you know, letter, put their name in it, do a black Sharpie and sign it, put it on the front of the report. Um, and then I would bring it over to their house that day with a box of C's candy and say, hey, look, you know, Matt, I, I got your reply. I'm so glad the values are there for you. Um, look, I just want to go face to face, you know, belly to belly, eyeball to eyeball. Uh, also bring you something a little sweet to chew on while you guys are pondering when you guys want to go on the market. Uh, so when you when you get a little bit closer to that time frame, um, I, I'll, I'll keep you on our, on our drip and I'll make sure I stay up with you in case like something changes in your life and you wake up at two o'clock in the morning, you guys just have to sell, you know, I'm one phone call away, but I just want to put a face to a face because I know a lot of people just hide behind the phones and behind the emails, but I prefer to get, you know, I want to make, make sure people know who I am, what I look like, my style of selling. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions right now that I could answer maybe for you the, about the market or about kind of what we're looking at here in the area. And then they'll say yes or no. The conversation goes. You use the Ford family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Build that rapport with them. You come back to the office. You can do a send out card. Take a you know Google shot of their front of their house, or if you since you're there, take a picture at the front of their house. Send a send out card to them. Hey Matt, it was great to meet you today. Thanks for the time. Enjoy the candy. I look forward to talking to you in a couple of months. Boom, done. Boom, out. Yep. Just touch, 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 touch. And then allow them to have that positive imprint of like, dude, that guy's really freaking cool. Like, I like this dude. He's like, he was, he came to the house. I, like, if 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 I was to be pondering to sell something or buy something, and someone went to the extra level of effort to physically come to my house, have a conversation, do pre work, then send me a thank you card for me spending time with him, which I didn't even ask for, but he 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 or she thought it was valuable in their lives. I'd be like, okay, I know they're a salesperson. But I also know that they took the time out of their day to come over and meet with me and run numbers, and I respect that hustle, and I want to reward someone who's actually going to get out there and do a good job for me. I would personally like that a lot. That's how I would feel. But, yeah. I mean. Well, and you're used to that because you, you, you run a two-stage listing consultation anyway. So for you, that's just you're going to do it in two stages anyway. So if the first stage is now and the second stage is six months from now or it's done all in the same week, uh, is really not that big of a deal. I think where people get tripped up is there's there's people who have really mastered their listing appointments to the point where they're taking 80 or 90 percent, and they're really good at it. And so they have the mentality: to look, I'm not showing up and not leaving with the listing. Therefore, if you're not ready to have a conversation about listing now, I'm not showing up at all. And that's that's fine. Um, once you get to that level, there there are things that you can do to kind of scale that uh, and preserve your time and still give them a great impression. Here's here's how I would do it. Uh, and this is based on people that actually do this, so it's not just me talking on my ass. Um, for the people <laughs> uh, that have pre-listing packets, especially like really nice boxes like Eric Brown has, who we've had, had on the show, right? He's got his C's candy. He's got the testimonial booklet. He's got the marketing plan. He's got the whole thing. It's, it's his shock and awe box. Um, if you get a, a seller lead who's maybe not interested in doing something right now, you want to make a massive positive impression right now so that you can keep on following up with them and they remember you, right? Uh, but you don't want to go out to their house and have that actual FaceTime because maybe you don't have the time. Maybe you're actually legitimately too busy. What you do is you reach out and say, hey, I'm going to send you a box of, of, of information uh, as well as a, a gift uh, just to, to help you kind of make the right decision and know kind of what information you need going forward. So I'm going to have a courier drop that off tomorrow, you know, do you, if, if, is it, if it's okay if he stops by between 4 and 6 o'clock. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So I'm going to have my courier hand deliver that out to you. It'll have everything that you need to make a good decision on, on whether you want to kind of list down the road or whether you might want to be you know, putting your house uh, up on the market a little bit sooner. Uh, when they get that, if it's a legit pre-listing packet with your marketing plan and some testimonials and all that stuff, to whatever level that you do it, just that alone will set you apart from like 99% of other agents. Yeah. And you don't have to go out there. Now, if you're new, go out there. But if, you, if you're scaling it up and you're already a successful agent and you're doing 25, 30, 50 deals a year, put together a pre-listing packet, and then that's how you respond to that so that you scale your time. Who, um, um, Ron, Ron Wood, uh, he, he gave his listing presentation. Did we ever get the, his listing presentation? Ray, Ray Wood? I mean, Ray, Ray Wood, not Ron. What, what the fuck am I saying? Ray Wood. He, he, he said he's going to give his listing presentation. Did we ever receive that week so we can put it out in our email, on my, our weekly email? Um... I remember him dropping a link, I think, that I copied. We'll have to yeah. take a look at that. Well, we'll, sure. we'll double check. But, yeah, I know Ray gave away his uh, stuff. And he's got a great book 
that's yeah. aimed at consumers about how to how to sell a home uh, that goes out in his pre-listing packet. Like that is his pre-listing packet. So that's another great thing. So if you've written a book or if you've ghost written a book or if you work with somebody like Glenn Twiddle that can help you and they have most of the copy done for a book, um, then that's another great thing is just to say like, hey, I know you're not ready to make a move right now. I'd love to meet with you when you get a little bit closer to making that decision because you really need to talk about like accurate numbers to really even know like what the what the timing is. But yeah. if you're really not ready to have that conversation yet, I'm happy to just let me let me get you a copy of my book. I'll have somebody, as Glenn would say, pop round. I'll have pop some round. pop round. Pop uh, round. Pop round and uh, <laughs> drop that off to you. Would you? Uh, will we be home between four and six tomorrow so that they can drop that off to you? Yeah, one of the one of the guys, you know, Matt out of uh, you know, Australia, he uh, did he did five. Matt, we got to get him booked for the damn show, by the way. We have we'll dropped the ball on that. Who's that? Um, getting Matt booked for the show. Mm. Um, Matt yeah. Steinwick, yes, we have. Yeah, that. but guys, one of the things he did, he has a he has a very easy step and repeat pattern that he does, and for when he goes on listing presentations, uh, he'll go there. Uh, then 30 minutes after he leave, he leaves that house, he has someone come by and drop a box of candy off to that people, thanking him to spend time with with Matt. And then he had, you know, he has a whole series of stuff, and we'll go over it with him. But it's a genius way to do it. He just touches people continuously for a couple of days. Uh, but yeah, and that's attention to them. Uh, it, he's an interesting guy because he's an uh, he's one of those that he probably has a very high closing percentage, but he's also not really that concerned about it because he's got he he's actually more concerned with having a great listing appointment, and then he's okay if he doesn't walk out of the house of the listing because he knows his follow up is so good mm -hmm. that 99% of the time he'll still end up getting the listing. Aaron Aaron Wittenstein is another one of those guys that consistently will have a listing appointment where he doesn't take the listing there, but still ends up getting it because yeah. their follow-up is better. Uh, and so that's that's kind of my answer. I, I don't necessarily buy into the the macho, I'm there to take the listing, and if I if I walk out of this house without a signed agreement, screw off, I'm not working with you. Because um, there's plenty of other guys who are making a lot of money. Matt Steinway is doing five mil a year in GCI. That guy knows what the F he's doing, um, F? and he's – Fuck, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Sorry, oh, oh. I, I, I tried to tame it down. You forced me to do it. But anyway, he knows <laughs> he knows what he's doing, and he knows that his follow up is so good that even if he does, he, so he doesn't have to press them to make it a, a yes or no, do or die decision at the listing appointment because he knows his follow up is going to help make that decision and tip them over the edge. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tar Tarun says, "We'll love to see that book slash pre listing box." Um, the the best example of it that we've had on the show is Eric Brown. Go look up Eric Brown's episode. Eric is E-R-I-K. Uh, he is an agent who relocated from Minnesota where he built a successful team that he systematized and then he moved out to Beverly Hills and is now building another successful business out there. Uh, and that's one of the strategies that he took with him. And really that's a, that's a Dan Kennedy classic. It's called a shock and awe package uh, where you have your book and you have testimonials and all this stuff. So that's a very tried and true, uh, strategy that you hear from probably a lot of guys once you, once you pay a little bit of attention. Mm -hmm. I got to give a shout out to TK. What up, homie? Good to see you, brother. Glad you are here. All right. So one, uh, let's see, actually let's, uh, let's take one last question, but Greg, why should people reach out to you first before we uh, handle that last question? Because I'm a loving, caring human being who is not rude to anybody. Yeah, we don't care unless about you're, unless you're unless you're a dick. What can, what, you. what can you do for me, Greg? What's in it for me? W What's W I I F M. What's in it for you, Matt? Friendship, a business partnership. That is what's in it for you. Uh, but for you guys, for EXP, guys, go to bookmcdaniel.com. If you're watching me right now, it's in all caps right next to my name. Go to bookmcdaniel.com. If you're thinking about doing EXP, if we brought value to you, I want you guys on my team. Uh, so please, pretty pretty pretty, please go to the go to the link. Sign up, book time. Let's talk about EXP. I got an EXP call right after the show uh, with someone who did exactly that. They went to this link, they booked a time because we have a Kim Kardashian ass of value up in here. What Matt and I are going to bring to all y'all, but I'll talk about all that on on our call. So go to bookmcdaniel.com right after the show. Book 30 minutes with me, guys, because I well, want you. To be to be more specific, team. since apparently you've stopped telling people what's in it for them. Um, so not only do you get all of our training for free. So that's Rockstar Prospecting, Get Now Business, New Agent Launchpad. Uh, we just did a whole series behind the scenes on buyer agent training. So that's being uploaded. Uh, so we've got all these different trainings that you can plug into that gives you kind of the system for how to do that thing. Uh, we also have Jeff Cohn's live stream training that broadcasts every Wednesday and Friday, fully high def audio and video where you can literally plug into 
the the super high level in-depth training and dialogue training that he's giving his agents in his office in Nebraska, which is the top team in the in that state that will sell uh, probably 800 plus homes this year. So you can plug into that training for free. Uh, our mentor, uh, Hank Avink, who we've had it on the show before, um, you've, you probably heard him talk about 36 to Life, which is his signature program for how to run a real estate business uh, that's very successful, doing 36 deals a year and then increasing your average price. That's really our main that's me. That's our main strategy that we believe works for most agents in this business. You get that for like a, an essentially an admin fee of 36 bucks. I mean, it's as, as close to free as he can make it. Um, so you get that for for uh, you know for joining our team. So you get all these things in there. I'm working on a program that'll help you take a Facebook Live series or any type of live video and transform it into a quick and dirty podcast that you can throw up on iTunes and start bringing in business owners and stuff like that into your uh, into your live videos. Uh, so all those things are here or coming and are in our training portal and all that stuff. Then we also do live training every Monday morning. We also do a live conference call every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific where Greg can give you uh, strategies and systems for sales and prospecting. So that's all included. So that's why you should go to bookmcdaniel.com. Now, let's uh, – That's lengthy. Play. I know. It's lengthy. Uh, so here – and then the question is – this is from Casey. Uh, he's working with the buyer. It says, I found them the perfect off-market home. It's in their dream neighborhood, extremely low turnover rate. So this is like a, this is the gem. Uh, so okay. the buyer tours the home, loves it. Then the sellers go on vacation for like a week. So the buyers yes. have time to cool off. Now they think the home needs too much work. When a week ago, they were asking me, how can we move in as quickly as possible? How do you, how do you get uh, that back on track? <sighs> Well, you have to figure out what that cause was for them to slow down. If they have been chattering like drunk monkeys on a branch about how how much they want this neighborhood, and then the opportunity is there, it's affordable, they they, they wanted to do work, now it's too much work, someone got in their ear, something changed, and you need to figure out where that root is and then you know tear it apart. You need to figure out what is going on because maybe they talk to their parents, their friends, someone at the school function, you know, someone at the country club or – you know, just something. Someone said something to them that spooked them, and most of the most of the time, the people that that are giving the advice are, in in your terminology, terminology, wildly unqualified to make right. any type of advice. You know, Aunt Sue, who did real estate back in '73 for a hot second, goes, mm, "Darling, I don't think that's the best buy for you." Well, when Aunt Sue says that, and she was a real estate agent, and you love her, and you somewhat respect her, we should tell her that to her face. Um, you know, and she gives you, says it's not a good buy. Well, all of a sudden that's going to trump the real estate agents who are active in the market right now, almost hands down. Right. So yeah. figure out the root cause. What is the real reason for them freaking out? Because okay. not probably what you think. Yeah. That's what I would All right. Say. I like it. All right. So figure out the root cause. So uh, what, what's a good, what's a good question that will get it'll help get to the heart of it without you coming off like you're just launching into a series of questions that are designed to change their mind because that will them. Resistance right away okay so let's role play this real quick so okay. matt you're the buyer you and julie you're three obese little what's that can insulin you know troll babies in the insulin troll babies not just mm -hmm. anyways okay. you tell me as your agent that you don't want to make an offer on you know your dream house Okay. Just tell me you don't. Greg, I, I think uh, we're, we're, we're seriously reconsidering. Like, it's just, I, I don't think it's, um, I think we're going to end up having to put too much money into it. And it's going to be too much hassle, and I think we need to probably go look at another house. Oh, interesting. Okay, so wait, help me understand this. Did did something change uh, from the last time we spoke? Because last time we spoke, and may I, I may have misunderstood what you were saying, um, but I mean, I do believe that you guys were pretty excited about the house, um, and I just wanted to see, you know, what 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 shifted from now until then, now then until now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, we've been talking a lot about it, and um, you know, we were talking to my my aunt Sally, uh, who who was in real estate, you know, back back in the day, and we're yeah, we're just talking about some of the upgrades that we wanted to make, um, and uh, you know, she just. She pointed out that, you know, working with contractors is tough, getting construction loans, and, you know, we might need a construction loan to do all the things that we want to do to it to get it into the shape that we want it to be for our family. Um, so it kind of just, um, it got us thinking about that process, and we really just need something that's, you know, move-in ready. 
move in ready. Okay, not a problem, but let me ask you this question. If we, I don't want you to regret your regrets. Um, and I'm not trying to push you into the house, but I don't want you guys to wake up, you know, three months down the road, two weeks from now or whatever, and be like, dang it, we had the opportunity to buy in our dream neighborhood. If, so what I'm hearing is, is, is it's not the home, it's not the price. It's the fixing up that's, that's spooking you the most. That's the process. Is yeah, that no, we love we love the neighborhood. Yeah, um, the neighborhood's amazing. It's exactly where we wanted to be. So yeah, and it's no, it's not the price necessarily either. So, yeah, I guess it is just mainly the the getting in there and the the process and the cost and the hassle of all the upgrades that we want to do. Okay, so let's play the scenario out. Let's say we don't buy this, and down the road we it takes us a couple more months to find something for you. It's in a subpar school district. So I know the schools are very important to you guys, mm -hmm. um, and we're in an area. Yes, it's more it's turnkey, but it's not to your color and it's not to your finished level. So now you're going to have to go in. You're going to have to rip out some upgrades and put in your own upgrades, and you're going to have to do the the upgrades no matter what. Would it be better for you guys to have a better resale value down the road because of the better school district and take this home and slow slow step it, do project by project, not a whole overhaul? Because then at the end of the day, you're going to have a more a, a resaleable asset here that you're going to be able to, if something changed on you right away, you'd be able to sell it like this, and you know that because I know you guys have been looking here for a while, versus some of the other school districts that we've looked in. We've had these discussions before about a great house, but the school district just is not where you want it to be because I know your kids have, you know, have some learning challenges like I have, and they need some special attention. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that we don't regret our regrets. And I'm willing, I'm willing to spend the next six months to a year with you. I love you guys. You guys are like my friends. I'm gonna, you guys are coming over to Christmas. But do you want this process to be over and start the, the you know, start the, the home ownership, you know, right now, stop renting, stop living in the apartment, the corporate apartment that you guys have been furnished with and just step into your new reality? Because I've done this for a few days. When I mean days, I mean almost 20 years. And I've watched time and time again of families like yourself because it's a big purchase. There's a lot of numbers. There's a lot of zeros. There's a lot of emotions flowing through. You know, you get tense. And you you listen to people that and I, I'm I'm Aunt Sally I've never I haven't met her yet but when you guys do the move-in party I, I can't wait to meet her um, but sometimes like they might have your best interest but they might be giving you bad advice because they don't ha they don't see the full big picture like you and I have discussed the whole time so why don't you set, why don't you and uh, uh, you know your wife go sit down you and Julie you know write out our pros write out your cons about this home and about or be real honest with yourself. And if the cons outweigh the pros, like the neighborhood, the upgrade possibilities, the school district, you know, the neighbors themselves, we've met a lot of them. Like we met Steve the other day, remember when he came up for the saw for the first time? Great dude, he's like the nicest guy ever, right? You know, if the cons outweigh the pros, then we'll move on. But I want you to never regret your regrets. Mm. So, and that, so I, I paint a picture for him essentially. Yeah, I like that. It was it was a little a little wordy. I, I would go with something a little bit more questions based, but I love the that you started off with. I don't want you to regret your regrets, um, and then you kind of basically painted the picture of what it's like, and you really kind of questioned my assumptions, questioned you know my reasoning, but in a very non-threatening way, and making it clear that look, we're going to do the best thing for you regardless. So it's not just me trying to get out of having to do some more work. Like, hey, let's if it takes six months, let's let's do it. Let's get you into the right place. I just want to make sure that we're not regretting this two months from now when we're still out looking, when you could have been in the home and you could have had some of those upgrades done and just be kind of stepping it. So I like that. That was a good progression to kind of lead me through. If I was in that situation, I was your client, Greg. I, I like I would do, even if I didn't think it would change my mind, I would do what you said and I would go back to my wife and I would say, all right, let's 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 just let's just make sure you know, he really feels like this is a strong possibility that we can get it to where we want it and it won't be that much of a big deal, that it won't disrupt our lives that much. Let's make sure we're not letting a great house in a great neighborhood go just because we don't want to have some inconvenience for the first couple months that we live there. Exactly. I also forgot to throw in there that, hey, look, a lot of the times it's what's really hard with re doing you know, a remodel is getting a contractor you know, like, and trust that will actually show up and won't just bail on you. My brother-in-law is one of the best contractors in the business. I'm not saying that because he's his family. I'm saying it because he's legitimately really good and he's honest. So I can introduce you to a phenomenal you know, contractor here in the area that will do the projects for you. Um, and he's done my house 
twice. He's done our family cabin. He's right now doing my parents' house. You know, so we trust him implicitly. And that's one of the hardest things to know that the guys are going to do their job very quickly and not just drag this out for many, many moons. Yeah. So I, I, I yeah. throw that in there to give some uh, assurance that I'm not just going to be like, well, you bought the house. Well, see you later. Good luck with that remodel. That's right. <laughs> Don't forget to pick up my postcard every month when I send it to you. It's completely useless information and read it thoroughly. And then think of me fondly as you have sawdust in your morning copy. No. <laughs> uh, <that's> <laughs> You got to protect these people. I mean, the, these are your people. These are the, treat them like a mother, mama bird and with baby bird. You got to, you got to protect these little fools. And mm-hmm. then when they're out there buying and selling stuff, because they'll bump around. They'll, they'll, they're like children. They're gonna put their hands on the burner and get burned themselves. They'll play with the wrong end of a knife, cut themselves. And it's not because they don't know what. Well, it is because they don't know what they're doing. Ninety-nine percent right. of the time, and you have to be the parent to protect them, guide yeah. them. One yeah. of my clients uh, this year, he, you know, called me up and you know, like and thanked me for perf- him. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like thank you so much for not letting me be me thank you so much because i love the house i'm so excited to be here my girls love it it's perfect man i really appreciate it i'm like yeah. sweet bro awesome so another happy customer right all right guys well that's just gonna about do it um i briefly a couple of people to thank i should say i briefly mentioned the uh oh, the live training have. that jeff uh, not thanking you god <laughs> god sake um, no, uh, we want to thank Jeff Cohn uh, for um, yeah. offering the live stream uh, to our team members for free. Uh, if you are not a member of our team, you can actually still get access to that for the ridiculously low price of 17 bucks a month. And you can plug into the agent training of one of the top teams in the country. I believe they're number eight, number three uh, nationwide for Berkshire, number eight worldwide. Um, so yeah, one of the top teams in the country. Uh, so you can plug directly into their training. Just go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com, check out the live stream page. You can see previous broadcasts. You know exactly what it is. You can check out the syllabus. You can see exactly what co- what concepts and what uh, is in the curriculum that's going to be covered over the course of the year, all the topics that they're going to cover, both on the in-depth training and the dialogue training side. So Wednesday is the in-depth. Friday, they follow that up with the dialogue that's based on the in-depth training to tell you how exactly to implement and talk about it with your clients. Right. So if they cover buyer agent training on Wednesday, guess what? Friday is all buyer oriented scripts dialogue. So that is the way that that works. Uh, so that's at elite real estate systems dot com. Uh, and then wise hire, which we've had Jay on the show a couple of times. Just want to thank wise hire for being kind of a friend mm. and partner of the show. Uh, if you are looking to put the right talent on your team, whether it's your first assistant or you are looking for buyer and listing agents to join your team, you need a superstar admin person, whatever the case is, go check out Wise Hire with a Z, Wise Hire. Uh, and they make all, not only do they run the ads for you and they've got pre-built ads, that's what really impressed me about the back end of their system is they're actually well-written, like the copywriting is good, it's proven. These are well-written like ad templates that you can just start running. Uh, I didn't have to write an ad from scratch, thank God. Um, I mean, I can do it, but it's time consuming. Um, So you use one of their templates and then they actually make the applicants run through a disk profile and then they tell you who is the best matches. You don't waste your time like trying to put a high D into an operations role or putting in high SC out there in the sales role if they don't really want, if they're not suited for that. So it kind of weeds out the people that really shouldn't be applying for a certain role uh, and tells you who is the good match based on their actual behavior profile and values. So that's a wise hire. That's um, fantastic. We've got, holy cow, we've got some great people watching with us. Tom Elkins, Lauren Taylor, Stefan Adika, what is up, man? Chad Caseman, <laughs> Rick Beal. Thanks so much, guys, for popping in and, uh, and joining us and watching the show here live. Guys, you can do that right here on Facebook. If you want to grab the show after the fact and listen whenever you want, go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, whatever. Uh, make sure to download, rate, subscribe, review, share it. Um, we just want to thank you for sharing it because obviously people are sharing it with your fellow agents and your brokers. Uh, if you want to have us come speak, reach out to us, uh, reach out to Greg, reach out to me, whatever the case is. Uh, we might be speaking uh, at an event in Michigan uh, simply because somebody that listens to the show mm-hmm. recommended us to the selection committee for the uh, Realtors Expo out in that neck of the woods. And we might end up coming and speak. We'll see. Uh, if the details come together, that'd be awesome. If not, it's still just a good example of you folks that are out there that are listening that we we can't really see or hear you. We don't interact with you on a daily basis, but we know that you're out there listening. We appreciate it. Yeah, we truly do. We love you guys. That's why we do the show. We 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 enjoy it. Like Wyatt and Mario got to meet them for the first times in person. It was a fun. We just drank wine and cracked jokes and listened to good tunes with the Adika face rocking it up on the stage. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah, you guys, reach out to us. We love traveling. Matt does it for free. Um, 
you know, there, but I'm, I'm not going to go with that joke. I don't know where I was going. Anyways. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to bounce out of here. We love you. Share the podcast. Go to your notifications, by the way, if you guys are if you guys are listening to this on Facebook. Go to your, your notifications. Hit it. It's going to drop down. Change it from default to see first so you guys get notified right when we go live. Okay. As always, guys, Matt, we need a color. What color are we going to put on the bow tie? Hmm. Hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> you in, in, in honor of Stefan's shirt that he was wearing on saturday night so we put <laughs> let's put a leopard print bow on this episode <laughs> forgot about that thing <laughs> all right we are going to put a leopard print bow on this thing guys um until next time guys peace out ninjas we gone